been playing around with uh, AI stuff. Are you ready? Colin and Rose sitting on porch swing, talking about size and all things tech, everything. They got a podcast called the Size Showdown, discussing the software all day from sun up to sundown. Colin, he's a cowboy wearing cowboy boots. He's got a smartphone, knows how to navigate through. Rose, she's a farmer's daughter, grew up on a farm. Now she's talking about the software charm. Start getting basics, explain it all. How size makes life easier, no need to install. Talk about CRM. ERP and automation, helping small businesses grow the tech revolution. All right, Colin, talk, talk me through your process here. <laughs> my my <laughs> process. <laughs> oh, I got another version starting. I mean, I had to stop. There's another version. Okay. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Uh, welcome, Rose. Another episode of SAS Showdown <laughs> with our new, with our new, our new opening. I don't think we need song. to do an intro, Colin, because that no, we was don't. beautiful. No, we don't. That was beautiful. Um, so obviously, everything is uh, everything is all AI at the moment. Um, and I, through a LinkedIn post, somebody said that they really loved this new Sumo dot. AI or sumo.com oh service for um, music creativity. And I thought I'd give it a go. It, you know, works on a pro, you know, people have played around with image generators. Mm -hmm. You've talked about, you know, your experience using the image generators a lot. I thought, you know, let's try it. And it is. Well, and you, I did, I talked in, about audio generation as well. I haven't yeah. actually done it. So I'm impressed that you went ahead You're, and did it. Yeah, did you just it, have to... I guess, like, what did you use to generate the lyrics, Colin? Nothing. I just used a prompt. And my prompt... Okay, so it did it for you. Yes. So my prompt was, oh. you know, about 20 words. It was write an acoustic country song about Colin and Rose talking about SAS and tech on their podcast called SAS Showdown. Clicked create waited like seven seconds and I even did it on my phone. Um, and then lo and behold, there it is. The song's there, signed into my computer, same account, you know, same song. And, and oh, it does two versions for you. I'm not sure how many credits I get. In fact, it tells me I've got 20 credits left. So, uh, okay. I can uh, be a little bit more. I was going to say, um, you might make it more upbeat next time. <laughs> You, you can specify like a line dance or a hoedown yeah, or something. Yeah, I could do that. I, I, I went for, I think I went, I think the actual <laughs> prompt that I used was classic, classic country classic. song. Um, okay. I did for somebody else for another project that we're doing. I did create um, uh, like a, a Southern rock country song, almost country versus Western. If it yeah. has a, a different tone for each of those. Yeah, I'm not sure if it gets how how it does the old okay. uh, music genome project and, and how it breaks it down, but well, yeah, that's fun. Very very Thank creative. Thank you for doing that for us. Although okay. I must I must say the song that we had playing in the first season of Sash Showdown that I believe was written by your cousin, um, um, my wife's cousin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I really did like that song. Yeah, even though we couldn't <clears throat> keep it in the show. Yeah, it just yeah. It's a sort of a, like it's a little. <laughs> Country spaghetti western sort of twang, yeah, yeah. yeah maybe we'll I'll uh, maybe I'll uh, get it to write. Maybe if my, my my remaining twenty credits, maybe I can get it to do uh, a twenty second upbeat jingle or something. We can use that going forwards. I see what it does. So you don't need human talent, people. It's no, fine. <clears throat> no, but no, but we Just are kidding. humans here. Uh, no real now. humans here. There are no no humans were harmed in the making of this podcast. Look, um, Colin, how was Google Next? I hear it was good. I watched it. I did not go, um, okay. which is from 
the uh, obviously we heard a lot from Jesse and Tab Geeks and and their reporting and, and videos our from it. News and, yeah. yeah, it uh, did involve an awful lot of walking, um, from what I've heard from from other yeah. people as well. It was I heard there was somebody wandering around who looked just like me. I got several texts from people being like, "Hey, are you at Google Maps?" And I was like, "I am not." <laughs> yes, everybody I knew was going to be there, but I was not there this time. Um, yeah. But I, I did get to watch the whole of the, the first day keynote i did watch all of the second day developers keynote um a lot of the sessions are now available so i have at least 10 plus hours of content to watch um already watched one of the sessions fit those about in between migrations <laughs> yeah I fit them in between migrations yeah if i do like one hour a day i can get through them within a, a couple of weeks um there was one really good one I watched on AI and how it's being used already in uh, Gmail filtering for Gmail spam filtering. detection. For spam detection. I was going to say, okay, yeah, that is one of the things about AI today is that like it could stand to improve a lot of the systems we already use. I think we talked about this previously um, yeah. about. At, well, we talked about like admin alerts, I think was the context that we used, but on a yep. personal level, spam filtering is also one of the ways that we can do it. Yeah. And the, um, the very exciting new uh, Google Workspace Gemini AI SKU, there's now a security mm -hmm. SKU, which uh, you can add and it will automatically categorize your documents based on what the AI right. thinks this. Uh, um, their um, sensitivity is or confidentiality is. And then right. with those, can, with those, I assume you can alt. verify and fix if you need to, yeah. but yeah. And that's actually a huge deal because data classification, introducing data classification to an organization is a massive undertaking. It is very time consuming, especially if you want to have good DLP roles and, yeah. you know, and the, utilize labels. Everybody knows that the longer you've had your Google workspace, the more stuff you have in it. Yes. So. Yeah. If you start from Greenfield, it's a lot easier to, build but if you if you were to join a place that has been there for a, a large number of years or it's just been too busy and it's grown organically uh, like i've experienced in the past and, and these mm -hmm. new features come out it's very difficult to um, you know automatically index and categorize you know a thousand users documents absolutely um, so yeah very very difficult yeah. so those, those new so features now are very features exciting that help you do that um that's really exciting. as part of a SKU. yeah there's a the security ai SKU. There's a, a SKU for Google Meet um, mm -hmm. where it does some of the right. studio event, uh, studio effects, improve your lighting, does some light touch upping, uh, touch up, makeup, etc. Do, does your hair I, for actually, you? Okay, so to be fair, all of that is is real and valid. But I thought the most interesting piece of the um, Gemini for Meet features is uh, real time audio translation. Yes. So. You, so we know that in me, you can do real-time captioning, which is great. Mm -hmm. Now you can do real-time captioning with translation, which before you had to do it, like you do captioning, then it transcribes, then you can translate the transcription. And like, yes. yeah. So, yeah. so if you have a global company that has many people who are maybe not native English speakers or like just multilingual um, company, then um, those features are huge. Because yep. now you can have, instead of having language focused meetings, you can potentially have um, collective ones. And I have actually tried that feature and I've seen it in play and it is quite good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. From what I've seen, the demos looks very good. And the, uh, the note taking within uh, Google Meet with Gemini AI, Gemini AI is very good as well. Yeah. Puts, a, puts everything oh. in a doc and you get your action items. And then from those action items, obviously you can convert them into tasks and track them. Does the, um, um, so I had heard that Gemini was going to have a feature basically that could attend meetings for you. That's coming. I, yeah. That's coming and I know I'm it's not coming. sure. Is it going to be part of the separate SKU though? Do you know? That I don't know. I think that might be uh, those three little letters at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm, I wasn't up to the three letters when they told me. So uh, if, if if you've heard it, then it must be out. I just know that it's been on the yeah. may yeah, may have been no on the roadmap but, for a while and and no demo, but um, just said that like it was coming, it was something that they were working. Yes, on, yeah, so. yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, I guess are there any non AI features that you saw next that you were interested in? 
so far? I guess or the the biggest. Did you watch all the AI based episodes first? <laughs> it's hard not to watch one of the videos that doesn't like have ai now. to do it it is pardon i said we're like fan girls now we are we are fan people <laughs> yes we've gone from skeptics we're we're AI we've groupies. gone from <laughs> skeptics to converts to advocates yeah. um the i think the, it's just the pace of it really like things are changing really fast right now yeah yeah, that's what I hear from a lot of people in a lot of different industries, the whole speed of it. Um, it yeah. what you, you asked what was the most interesting thing that uh, I thought was announced. Um, mm -hmm. Potentially the newest uh, application to be part of Workspace, although I've some, seen some wording that says it's not a, a Workspace app, but vids.google.com. Oh, right. Yeah. Which is a... I thought that was a very interesting choice to so add to, to call, the suite. To call it vids it, it was a very, very interesting choice because I heard That's it was so... announced. So I went to Google and I typed in vids.google.com and the results were for very old help sites for Google Video. So back before Google bought My YouTube, God, they, haven't scrubbed that stuff they, the no, they used to be, there's still the help pages up about it. So they used to be video.google.com, um, you know, Google video, which is, which is like Google's YouTube. So all of those results before came out. Before YouTube. Yeah. 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 So it's before 2006 or whatever. So vids is different, right? Vids, vids creates it, video content. Yes. If I remember. Yeah. And how people will utilize it will be very interesting in the creative field, the project update, you know, status report world that some of us live in, um, certainly in, you know, client services. Instead of doing, you know, an email report to somebody or sending them a PDF, you could create a, a more engaging, interactive video, you know, by putting in a few, a few prompts, you know, some of your, your data Gone are and the then days have it. You have to actually record a trainer video. And now yeah, you can basically thing, put together a deck and it'll do the video for you. Yeah, because, you know, that that type of report would take, a, you know, 48 hours to, for, for a whole bunch of freelance creatives to put together animators and editors and voiceovers. And that was the other thing that this would do is you can put in your text or you can create um, some prompts for the text and it will auto-generate the uh, audio content for you. So mm -hmm. what I had seen in the demo, it looked like it could could create it, a podcast for you. So it will be interesting to see when it Maybe does we come out. Create an episode with it. How many? How see many? Yeah, think. yeah. How many auto-generated podcasts there might be? Um, obviously, we are not. I was going to say, so procedurally generated YouTube videos is already sort of a thing, right? Like mm -hmm. children's videos in particular. It's like a yeah. really sinister, weird part of the internet. Um, so I'm curious to see how that translates to adult stuff. I will say also like for the L and D folks who might be listening and clutching their pearls a little bit, um, just remember that everything that AI does for you gives you more time to go do something else. Yes. Yes. That, that's, that, that's what the marketing most people says. Are resource strapped in any organization at times. And so, yeah, like there are definitely parts of AI coming out where I'm like, Oh crap, that could save 10 hours a week <laughs> of yeah. actual work. Right. And like, yeah. but like I could use 10 hours, I'll figure it out. I, I have certainly reduced what would have been a four hour task into 15, 20 minutes of prompts and some editing. Um, yeah and probably got much better content and quality documents than I would have if I've had to type them all out myself. Um, so it, it certainly does have some, it does have its, its pluses. Um, obviously there's a, still the fear of the negativity part or the negative part. Um, but hopefully it will add to, you know, improved end user experience, certainly with a lot of the, um, AI and built into chatbots. Um, mm -hmm. It should improve the consumer experience, customer service yeah. experience. If the the demos that were shown, you know, are accurate, you know, we have had 
chatbots on websites for years, but they have mostly been They've absolutely been terrible. Very limited. And I know from actually having to try and set up a chatbot that it takes time. Like yeah. there's a lot involved in like making sure that they can answer the right questions and training them to answer the right questions. And like yeah. Yeah. AI can do that a lot faster. Yeah. Because those those questions and answers were almost like it was a text based game, you know, the old Oregon yeah, trial. Yeah, exactly. Where it's like if you did, you know, type... if I can keyword this correctly, <laughs> can I? Yeah. yeah. And then, like yeah. having it's funny because when you do that as a collective exercise as part of a team, everybody kind of has to be on the same page about how to keyword properly, and so it's yeah, it's a whole thing. But um, yeah. I did want to call out too, um, just related to AI news. I recently was reading about how the government, the U.S. government, um, I can't, I forget which branch now, but um, they uh, basically put a ban on Microsoft Copilot because they're working on getting AI features enabled, but they're just not ready for it. So they they With, sent out a thing that was like, hey guys, you really can't use this stuff for work. On on government machines or government devices, government accounts. For government work. Right. Yeah, so just like a blanket ban. <laughs> um, but they did say that by the fall, they're hoping to have some AI features enabled. So the teams yeah. are working hard. Yeah, to try and make it, it happen, which I think is a that's a really good indicator to me, like for for if there are companies out there that are not yet working on how to introduce AI into their organization, um, the US government is doing it already. Right. Because nobody understands the power of reducing bureaucracy <laughs> more than the US government. So, <laughs> and there's a lot of bureaucracy that goes on um, that can be solved by AI. So uh, I do think, yeah, if there's organizations out there that, are, that have a ban for whatever, for whatever reason, whether it's privacy, security, just like not really mm -hmm. sure how to manage it, like better get moving because the government does glad something and you haven't done I'm it very, yet, that's kind of, yeah. meh. I'm very glad that they're putting uh hitting pause and waiting mm -hmm. um because the last thing you yeah. want is 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 hallucinations to come from the government it's fine when exactly. ai gives they, you they, hallucinations they and there have been with it yes because there have been some some big failures there was the air canada um ai uh, bot told a um a customer an incorrect policy uh and the company tried oh, to no, really? try to go said well you know that's not right and this uh, customer sued air canada and and, won. Uh, and won yeah yeah because the, yeah. you know the bot had was acting for the customer and then after that the bot the bot was fired um they did uh, disable it and remove it from their systems because it was hallucinating and creating policies i mean okay i do understand pressing pause on it but no. I don't think you should get rid of it. You should just figure out what's wrong and fix it. Right? It's clearly yeah, doing I, a lot of good. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know. I, I don't uh, know either. That's what I said in the article, but yeah. yeah. The last thing you want is the government to be hallucinating po um, True. Uh, policies. True, yeah, you don't want government policies to be hallucinating. But I think, you know, <laughs> I find chatbots honestly to be really weird. <laughs> I, I don't want to get too political and we might have to put a, a disclaimer banner ad and uh, click some button in YouTube, but uh, maybe a hallucinating bot would be a better Congress than the one that we actually have. <laughs> Just a team of hallucinating bots, a hundred of them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 That's all we need. Uh, I do actually think if you put a team of bots together like that, they might actually learn how to work together eventually. Because their goal is to get what they want, right? So they'll just shift slowly what they want. Yeah, yeah. Just like yeah. people, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Except yeah. now we're we're human, so we are a little more stubborn than that. Bots are less stubborn than we are. Right. Yes. Uh, okay. Because they're not human. Anyway. Um, yeah, I guess this uh, turned into an episode about AI again. Uh, and well, and because that was obviously the big announcement from Next that was, you know, very recent, um, was yeah. also quite 
soon after the last one they had in San Francisco in September or end of August, beginning of They're September. Just the this time is of April. Year, I think, right? Yeah, and now next year they've already announced next year's dates, same time, April 9th and eleventh of twenty twenty five. So right. mark your calendar now and uh, book your hotel and flight. Um in start Las to- Vegas. Yeah, yeah, start get used oh, to uh, walking and uh, standing around. But um, yeah, it uh, from everything I've seen, it was a, a great event. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, an, um, in in Microsoft land, uh, they lost a lawsuit um, in the EU. Yeah, um, that's forcing them to do some rethinking about the structuring of office and teams being bundled together, mm-hmm. which we've discussed before is a very strong symbiotic relationship between the two. They're very well coupled, which means that they're very sticky in an organization. However, the flip side of that is that it is hard to get away from them. Um, And it, it does sort of negate competition in the space. Yeah, um, and I think the the court case was initiated yeah. by Slack and Zoom and others that said it was a monopoly. You know, we have mentioned. Yeah. You know, it's interesting th- because I think of... from a user perspective, we've talked about how. Oops, just lost my earphone. Um, we've talked about how the coupling is a good thing for users, but yep, we also we... know that we want competition in the space because that yep. helps drive innovation yeah we so. talked about a single pane of glass those single mm-hmm. apps um yeah. you know that microsoft have done slack obviously have done zoom are still trying to do google did when they did the new um, gmail ui um, a couple of years ago mm-hmm. that was trying to keep everybody in in one browser tab one application <laughs> because you know there is always the fear that if you bounce to another application you won't come back um, and it is, is that, uh, but... that, that, as you say, that stickiness and keeping people there. But yeah. it was seen as being anti-competitive because mm-hmm. the Teams was part of the office, you know, 365 SKU, whatever you were getting. E, I think, know, and to me, three, I five, think there's seven. a very simple answer to this problem. And I, we've definitely talked about it before, which is um, you need to make your app open to third parties. Yep. Yep. The more uh, open it can be, the better off you will be. Because then not only are you not breaking these antitrust laws because you're not shutting people out, but you're also you're just improving the general integration landscape of your app. Yeah, yeah. And we used to have a lot of that back in the day. Mm-hmm. You know, back in the nineties you had um everything plugged into everything. You had the um There were standards, uh, I guess, right? X- like what was it called? XPM protocol, which mm-hmm. IRC and Jabber used to use, and even Google Talk used, used to be able to use multiple clients, whatever client yeah. you wanted to well, connect to the same protocol. Well, we need a protocol like that, but it's more about APIs. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Well, it, you know, it, it, with video conferencing, it used to be H323, I think it was the, uh, you know, and IP uh, video conferencing, where it didn't matter if you had a Tamburg or a Cisco or a Polycom, right. um, or uh, I can't remember the other companies, but they could all talk to each other. But, mm-hmm. you know, now you can't. Um, although there is, there are some intermediary services that help with that, PECSIP. Of one of the companies. I think that that's the thing. Help. Yeah, intermediary services have kind of come up and, and gone a long way to help connect those dots. Like, for example, I, this is the thing. I, I understand Slack being upset about Teams, but also people get upset about Slack too because it's really hard to bridge Slack with other services. Yeah. Um, oh, like I, it's also I've worked difficult with companies to... that bridge it with IRC, which is fascinating but you need an yeah, oh my service, God. So. yeah yeah and it's even difficult to bring people into slack now without paying having them pay for a license or paying um, for them yeah or paying for them so yeah, yeah. it's yeah. uh there isn't that sort of guest access or free access which does make it very complicated there, well, there, there and, is, and is a it's barrier. just single channel right. so basically if you work with somebody more than one channel's worth then they I, one of you has to pay for it is basically the the way it works now and that's kind of a shame because yeah. if you were like so if i was a consultant and a freelancer 
and I worked with multiple clients and they all used a different service, I would potentially have to pay for every single one of those services in order to be able to work with them. Yeah. And that's just not fair. Right. But then the other, the flip side is that I have to bundle it into my fee. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they pay for it. <clears throat> so I don't know. Just like, yeah, I can imagine like if you're, if you're a professional services oriented person or business, it can be really difficult to try to make sense in this. And I've been in those kinds of situations where I'm trying to figure out how to make the professional services teams more effective mm -hmm. when everybody's working on something different and none of them really plug into each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? That's because why. Because wouldn't it be nice if like you were working with a Google organization and they were a Slack organization and you could just create a channel that connected between you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, I... that's the dream. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think some of that will come eventually. But I think this is why there is still, you know, um, a, a place for email, um, because thankfully we we so. don't have separate email systems. It's not like yeah. the old CompuServe and, and AOL and Proton Mail, not Proton not. Mail. Back in the day, <laughs> um, there was another one. Yeah, email is the, the great US. equalizer, I guess. In yeah, that sense, yeah open standards yeah. um, so everybody communicate. All right. Well, uh, thank you for the lovely roundup, Colin. And thank you again for starting the episode with that beautiful AI song. song. I, should, I should try, I, should, I could pick it. I could pick another one to, uh, to close. Sure. I can see what this Let's one is it. to close. Let, uh, let me share my screen do this. And then <clears throat> this is the same song, just a different melody, I think. Long arrows sitting on a porch swing, talking about size and all things tech, everything. I know the song is this model doctor. Yeah, it's called the size showdown, discussing software all day, sun up to sundown. Calling he's a cowboy wearing cowboy boots, but he's got a smartphone, knows how to navigate through roads. She's a farmer's daughter, grew up on a farm. Now she's talking about cloud computing and software charm. They start with the basics, explaining it all, how size makes life easier, no need to install. Talk about CRM, ERP, and automation. Helping small businesses grow a tech revolution. That is lovely, Colin. There were some spacing issues in the song. Did you notice? It like went on to verse two before it was like. So that, oh. like, without a pause. that was interesting. Anyway, um, I have taken a few like musical theory classes, but um, thank you for that. Um, full disclaimer for the people, I am not a farmer's daughter. I did not grow up on a farm. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of farms where you did grow up. And I, I also believe that Colin has more qualifications than having a smartphone and knowing how to navigate through it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, hopefully. hopefully. And I don't have cowboy boots. I got a I got a cowboy hat, but not a cowboy boots. You don't have boots? No, I don't have boots. Usually, no. the boots come before the hat. No, I, I bought the hat first. Okay, you need to sort out your priorities. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you should have worn that. While we were listening to the song. Yeah. That's like an Indiana Jones hat almost. Yeah, it's a felt one. Yeah, yeah. Keeps the, keeps the sun off. Yeah. I have like a floppy one because I live in the city. Yeah. A city girl summer hat is what I have. I used to have cowboy hats and I used to have cowboy boots. Also, I don't have either of those things anymore. But that's okay. That was when you were living on the farm. <laughs> That was when you were the yeah, farmer's daughter. When I, was, when, I was, when I was living on the farm with my family, yes. Um, anyway, thank you all for being here. Uh, thanks for listening to us talk about AI, Google Next, and um, some of the gaping holes that we still see in the space. Um, we'll see you next time. Helping small businesses grow tech revolution.